It's a special Thanksgiving episode of Locked on Coyotes. We go ahead and take a look at what we're thankful for this year um, for the Arizona Coyotes and, and other stuff. But all that on today's episode of Locked on Coyotes. Your Locked on Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlik right beside me on today's episode of Locked on Coyotes. It's a bonus episode. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, so we thought, you know, might as well go ahead and talk about, uh, you know, what we're thankful for this year for, you know, as we're as hosts of the Locked on Coyotes podcast. Uh, Carl, I want to shut off with you some stuff, stuff like that because, you know, it's a great time. Yeah, it, it's really fun. And there is... Yeah, you know, there's a lot going wrong with the Coyotes right now, but there's a lot to be thankful for. Um, starting off with, I am thankful for the win last night, a 4-0 win over the Cal- um, Carolina Hurricanes. Always good. Like, it's a tough team. It was a dumb, enjoyable win to watch. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's those stupid wins. That you could be thankful for. It's just like, it's like, did they deserve to win? Eh, no. Nah. But are we glad they did? Absolutely. Yeah, um, definitely. I there's one other thing too is, um, you know, I'm thinking, well, we got a chance to take to get a really good look at Dylan Gunther and the fact that he proved himself to be up here in, with the yeah. NHL. Dylan Gunther, um, his his play has really progressed. He is. Currently, um, you know, he was a healthy scratch for a game, really seemed to motivate them, went out and had a two assist night. So that's always good. Um, he is definitely an important piece of the Coyotes, and it's great to see that he is moving in his career really well. Um, one of the big things that I'm thankful for, and this is something we talked about earlier, um, is the fact that the Coyotes had a decent enough start. Like, I remember last season with you, it was depressing watching the Coyotes start with, like, loss after loss. Like, really bad. Uh, And I know the Coyotes are going to go on losing streaks for the rest of this year. Like, it's going to happen. There's going to be some lengthy ones, I'm guessing. But, you know, the fact that the Coyotes got a win early, it really kind of took a load off my mind. I did not want us to be like still talking about like, Hey, when do you think the carriers are going to get a regulation win? Um, because that was like a concern. I think their first one was like an overtime one last season. Like you, you kind of, once you get that under your belt, it really takes a lot of pressure off. Absolutely. Um, that, that, you know, I was thinking about that same thing. It's like, you know, like, I was worried at the beginning of the year. I was like, "Oh man, we're gonna have we're we're gonna have another depressing year, and it's gonna be bad." But like, you and I, we we we've stuck it out, and it's been and, it, and you know it it's been great so far. And this season's obviously has still got rocky, but we're I think yeah, we definitely be, can be thankful for the fact that we're not as depressed as last year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like even like you know the. You know, the the fact that the Coyotes started with a long road trip, had a short homestand, and then another ridiculously long road trip, that's just a recipe for, like, bad things happening. Uh, but no, they, they have played really well. They are in a tough situation, what with the locker room annex having to be built, they're out in the road a lot, but they are handling that kind of pressure. Um and if then they if they were in any way competitive, it'd be great for them because they've overcome that kind of initial hurdle. They're going to have like a lengthy homestand. They're not, so that doesn't really matter as much. Um, but just kind of good that the the team is seeming to move along pretty well. Like it's what you want to see in the second year of rebuild. 
Absolutely. One thing I do want to thank everyone once again is for making Lockdown Coyotes your first listen every day. You know, we're, um, you know, we uh, we do a lot of things. Be sure to, uh, you know, st stick with us. We lo we absolutely love having you as our um, as our listeners. We're going to continue to talk about what we're thankful for on this episode of Lockdown Coyotes. Um, you know, it's a special bonus episode. We love to talk with you guys about, um, you know, stuff like that. You know, being host of Lockdown Coyotes. Um, but we'll get to more in just a moment of this episode of Locked on Coyotes. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. It's where you can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, they've got it covered at Bet Online. And. If you're someone who loves sports podcasts, you can find those on Bet as Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. So let's continue this special bonus episode, Thanksgiving episode of Locked On Coyotes, as we continue to talk about what we're thankful for. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to a couple other things, Carl. One thing that uh, I want to talk about is being thankful that we are, uh, you know, seeing things move pretty quickly with the uh, uh, city council for Ted, right? Yeah. You know, we're seeing, you know, this month of November has been a busy month. A lot of things going on, and there's only one more public hearing left. Yeah, uh, I, I think I mentioned it. On a prior episode, we were talking about the the committee meetings. After watching the Coyotes and the city of Glendale interact uh, in a way that I think a lot of people are going to be recognizing from Thanksgiving, like two parents who just absolutely hate each other but need to stay together for the children. Um, that was rough to watch. It was openly antagonistic. That is completely different in Tempe. Tempe seems like really happy to be moving along with this. They're excited about the project. They're excited that the Coyotes are going to be there. Um, it's going to add a little bit more prestige to the East Valley in a way. And the Coyotes seem to be making all of the right steps to make sure that that is a good relationship. Everything from playing at ASU, the city of Tempe's biggest employer, I believe, i haven't looked that up uh to repeatedly saying like hey, yeah we're going to donate money this money is for homelessness this money is for traffic control spend it how you want we're just giving you money and, and that seems to be really good absolutely you know and, and and i think even beyond that too you know i think you know we can be thankful for the community that arizona is bringing to this east valley right okay. it's you know you're seeing a lot of things move in that direction um and We've talked about it too, Carl, with Outgrow the Game series, right? The kind of impact that the that the Coyotes are helping make with long, you know, alongside these organizations, alongside these kind of people, saying that hey, we're being a big part of helping grow hockey here in Arizona. And like, and look, let's looks it looks back to the interviews we've had, right? With Lindsey Fry, with Matthew Spang Marshall, with Jeremy Bow. Um, you know, specifically those three, and obviously Justin Emerson. You know, he also had a you know he also had a great episode too. I don't want to you know um, put his down in any way. I want to highlight those other three because again, they're talked about what the Coyotes did with them, right? And talked about you know that impact, and you know I think we can all be thankful for that because um, we can all be thankful for Matt Shot <laughs> in that way, like you know. Like we love that dude, um, you know. We, like, I'm glad, and I, I'm glad he has his uh, his uh, uh, number and his name in the rafters of every single one. And I gotta, and I'll tell you that, Carl. I actually, you know, I play at at Coyotes Community Ice in Mesa, and I saw his thing, his his uh, number up there, his banner up there, and I'm like, there it is, Matt Shot. Everyone salute that 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 uh, banner right there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, although I do think that the Coyotes are currently having a really nice relationship with the, uh, the ASU population, uh, after, you know, they made that jump to NCAA, uh, the fact that there's the student section where there's 
whole new traditions being created for the Coyotes, which are always fun to see. I have a question for you, though. Which of the new additions to the team are you most thankful for? Which of the new additions to the team am yep. I most thankful for? So, so oh, no man. one who played for the Coyotes last season. Uh, no Matias Michelli, despite him having a stellar year. Uh, I'm even going to say no Dylan Gunther because he was a prospect in the system. Whole new player. Who do you think has been best? Who do you think is like, oh, I'm really thankful that we picked up that guy? Oh man, that's a hard one. Um, I think there's a lot of a lot of players who've made an impact for like short periods of time. A lot of players who have um, kind of just like then they've you know fizzled out or kind of just like you know have been a lot of good have been a lot of moves behind the scenes. Um, it's it's a tough one. Um, but you know, I'll, I guess I'll highlight you know a player who's made an impact and mainly in the last few in the last few games and. I think even before that, you know, even more than that, because yeah, he's we got some goals, but you know, even before that, he's kind of like had a, that visual, physical presence on the ice, and that's Nick Buke's dad. Nice. I've, I've loved his his uh, presence on the ice outside of the goals that he got in the last two games. <laughs> yeah, Buke's dad has definitely been like a a competent veteran, um, the likes of which we don't really we didn't really have last season, like. The veterans on the team then were just kind of like, you know, Louis Erickson, uh, Roussel. Like, those guys are kind of like over the hill. Like, there's a reason we're not really getting them as much play this season. Bugstad seems like a guy who's just like, hey, he needs a change of scenery, but he's playing really well. Um, definitely a good player to have. Uh, he was one of my two choices. The other one, uh, Yusuf Almaki. I have loved watching him play with J.J. Mosier. Uh, they have been the Coyotes' best defensive pairing for most of the games that he's played, um, without question. Jacob Chikram being back could potentially change that, but still, like Val Mackey and Mosier, that is a combo that you can like put in stone uh, especially because they're both pretty young. Like that could foreseeably be a pairing for the next like five years of the coyotes. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, those are some things to, to be thankful for as well. You know, be like, it's like, Hey, you know what? Like, you know, we're moving in the right direction, you know, in terms of player personnel and, and Bill Armstrong is doing a good job. Yeah, he is. He is doing really well, and it is surprising that the you know the connections that are being made. Uh, I would say kind of a similar thing with like Travis Boyd and Clinton Keller playing well last season. Like these are pickups where you know they may be year five of the rebuild. They may not be the case still, but they're still really good moves in the meantime. Uh, and like I said, like Val Mackey and Mosier, two young guys who are playing really well. That could be a five-year uh, rebuild, like top pairing, depending on how that progresses. I'm thinking probably more like second, but still right. solid second. Absolutely. Uh, a couple other final things that I want to talk about that I'm thankful for, and it's a lot more of a personal side, um, right, right, right? You know, but still hockey related here. Um, the first one kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier on that community side, Carl, and that's. Uh, you know, being afforded the ability to play hockey here in the Valley. Um, you know, I've, you know, I've had the wonderful opportunity there and I've loved every minute of it. And I can thank, you know, you know, get kind of the connections that I've made through this podcast. And I'll go to even that second one, right. You know, thankful for being the host of the Locked On Coyotes podcast for almost, for, for at least for me personally, call it almost two full years running. You're a little over one year, but I'm a, almost two full years running. It has been a phenomenal time. I've loved being the host here. I've loved getting a chance to talk to every one of you listeners about Coyotes hockey. It has been a blast, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, ditto. <laughs> uh, I, I, come on, you. I, I know you've been awesome. You, you, you've, you've been a great co-host as well. Um, you know, like honestly, I don't think I could have survived um last year um as a true host yeah myself. 
Estelle. It, it's it's definitely it, I am very thankful that I have someone who I can talk to about games. Uh <laughs> And this is not a freeform conversation. We do try and make the podcast entertaining to listen to. Um, but, you know, that before and after, just being able to, like, you know, break down what happened with coyotes, uh, it's good because it's the coyotes are like the sun in that it hurts to look at them. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, lo- I love that comparison. Also, I do want to say that, you know, you and I as co-hosts have come a long way since our days of dog cast days from uh, from Five for Howling, um, which has been, I feel like it's been a long time since then. Oh, yeah. That was like a whole second of like different apartment ago. It feels like a lifetime. It does feel like a lifetime ago. But we are here now and uh, we're all thankful for you all. Yep. Absolutely thankful to all the listeners, all the watchers, everyone who comes to us for for information. Um, it's it's great to be considered a trusted piece of of hockey infotainment, I guess, um, because we are providing good information. I hope. I yeah, <laughs> we sure hope so. We sure hope so. Any final things you want to bring up as we bring this? No, I, I think we've touched on everything. We're we're thankful for the people. We're thankful for the team. We're thankful for just everything. Absolutely. Well, that's going to be it for today's episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, to like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. And for those YouTube listeners, leave a comment down on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you are thankful for. We want to hear from you. Just be sure to let us know. But be sure to also interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes, on Instagram at locked on coyotes, and on Twitter at L O underscore coyotes. I'm personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Call Pavlock is at Call Pavlock F F H. Interact with us, ask a question you might have, we might answer right back or in a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys staying safe out there. Hope you guys staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.